I Lost My Body, directed by Jeremy Clapin, was one of the most pleasant surprises for film in 2019. It is perhaps one of the rare animated films that was purposely targeted for adults, and it was based on the 2006 novel Happy Hand. The film follows a hand completely detached from its body, and it's traveling around the city of Paris in search of its body again. I've watched this film a year ago and I absolutely fell in love with it. For an animated film to have this much originality in the visuals as well as the narrative, and now a year later having watched it again three times, so many themes, vivid details reached out to me more than ever. And so, I want to talk about them. Let's break down and analyze what this film was really about, the many themes, especially the ending of the film. What does it really mean and how does it all link together? So sit back, relax and, and enjoy this video with full spoilers. You have been warned. So let's begin. Right away we know that there are so many existentialist themes in this film, including trauma, memories, and flashbacks. The main character, how do you pronounce his name? Na Na Naofel. Naofel. Naofel? Naofel. Let's ask Google. Naofel. Naofel has gone through a lot during his young life, coping with the loss of identity after losing his family in a very tragic accident. The entire simplicity that most of us are very fortunate enough to have in our childhood, that's pretty much lost for him. Hence, losing his body metaphorically, but also literally. That's why we have this title, I Lost My Body. It's a very poetic way of communicating to the audience and asking, what am I supposed to do in this life? It asks a lot of deep philosophical questions. The Fly. We have two parallel narratives in this film. The first is the journey of the hand traveling through streets of Paris to go back to its rightful owner, and it starts off at a laboratory. It follows the main character all the time throughout this film, especially in the most important scenes of this film. It always seems to find its way to be there in some, in somehow, some way. The significance of this simple little fly, it relates to his destiny. What's out there for him? What's in store for him? His future? What's next? The way I see it after watching this film a few times is from when he loses his parents in the car accident, the fly seems to be there. All the way to when he accidentally chops his hand. It's there as well. The fly simply represents his destiny. The biggest defining moments that are far beyond his reach of control. It's these moments when Neofel thinks that he has no control over these crucial circumstances and it makes him feel powerless in his existence. Essentially, another way that I looked at it at first when I first watched this film is that the fly Obviously, the first thing that we see on the screen, it signaled death, but it also it was in contrast to the main character's bad actions as if he continued to blame the outer circumstances until he could no longer. The main reason as to why the director uses this fly is as a technique to link the protagonist's past and present in every way. He says when the film opens, it's like a puzzle. You see a black screen and you only hear the fly. When the black screen fades, we see that nail fell from the point of view of something on the floor. The fly drives a story and it was important for me to build a strong momentum from the beginning. The beauty of this film is its idea. The idea for the director to tell the story of fate separating two people. But in this case, it's a battle in the protagonist's mind. But then again, it appears as if the hand has become an, an entirety itself, an entire different character itself, and it's up to destiny to reunite them. When it comes to a film, you have the main effect. The main effect as to what really is it about the film that makes it as good as it is. 
And this is where the role of sound and visuals come in. The director harnesses the major elements of the film to immerse the audience in the hand and the main character's world. Neofell approaches the world through sound by recording the noises of the city, jumping on buildings, dangling from cranes, walking everywhere, feeling the ground. He listens to these recordings while being alone and feels comforted by it and quite rather alienated. This gives me the perfect opportunity to praise my favourite aspect of this film, the music score. Dan Levy made sure that the sounds of the city blur imperceptibly with the score. This music, this, this score has a very mystical and a cosmic feeling. Its realism mixes in with the naturalistic elements and the electronic instruments. It is truly the main emphasis on emotional connection of the film. The ending. So the final moments of the film, the hand does find its way back to the protagonist, but it ultimately is not able to reattach itself with Neofil. Meanwhile, he falls out with Gabriel where he does not know what to do, what has meaning. Just like the hand being completely detached from the body, that was one of the main reasons that gave it directions in life. The way I interpret this film's ending is rather bittersweet at first. But the more you think about it, the more you watch this film, it's exactly what he needed in the end. Although the experiences that this person has gone through are extremely painful, traumatic and heartbreaking, ultimately he manages to detach himself from a predefined form of fate. Now stay with me here. Let me explain this more. Everything that Neofel has gone through, it's just awful. But it was fate that made him detach himself from not only his hand, but the idea of fate itself. This was ultimately a gift. It led to his freedom in the end. Throughout the course of the film, we see the hand traveling through Paris, just battling the existential dread. It wants to go back to its owner. It wants to go back to that purpose again. It's fighting through everything to return to him. But in the end, it's left and it has no purpose anymore. Because Neofel has moved on. He took the leap of faith and the hand is detached. And this time, forever. Our fates and values are pretty much up to us. We, as the protagonists of our own lives, we have the opportunity to give it meaning and a true definition. Neofel comes up with schemes to openly defy this fate. His plan is to do something completely random, spontaneous, un unexpected in his life, something that would throw fate off his scent. And as for the ending, he cheats fate. It is something that has been brought up multiple times in the film. He mentions it when he takes Gabrielle up to that rooftop and he asks if she believes in it. She says that you have to do something unpredictable jumping onto the crane to beat it. In the end, it was fate for them two to find each other and of course fall out in the end, but it was because of that, because of the reason why they met, that he jumps onto to that crane and changes his destiny. His fate, his hand, it can't keep up with him. He barreled through and escaped and now it's up to him and he's free and everything is in his hands. I, I mean hand. Everything is in his hand. No, no. Oh, God. It's that laugh right in the end as a sign of relief. A new chapter that he may not be fully prepared to take on, but he seems quite excited. Neofel embraces how absurd life is in actuality, and that embracing what life brings him is the only way to move forward. He took Gabrielle's advice of embracing fate, believing something completely irrational as the only way to divert its constant course. Overall, these are my thoughts on the ending of I Lost My Body. If I have missed anything, please do let me know. Thank you so much for watching and leave your thoughts down below on what you think about the film and I'll see you very soon.